when it comes to your comments on these equity markets and further gains uh, to come through, Mark. Just unpack that view for us, given the upside that we've seen across November. Well, it's a classic kind of instinct of humans. Something goes very far one way. We expect kind of mean reversion. It's kind of a classic trap that kind of traders fall into. But ultimately, I understand these markets have rallied a long way very, very quickly. But I, I just don't see what the fundamental reason is to suddenly turn negative stocks, particularly at this time of year, where normally you do see trends accelerate and overextend. Because the whole point is, those people who are on the trade are kind of not going to suddenly get aggressive and try to get too clever and push to the way. And those who have been getting it wrong no longer have the P&L going into December to fight it. So this is the time of the year when you do see trends stretch. Now, there are some tenuous reasons for a stopping. There's, of course, month end. That might, might cause a, bit, a little bit of volatility during the week. We do expect some of the growth indicators to come in a little bit more negative. We expect some more hawkish speak out of Powell. But none of them, I think, are really enough to turn this market around unless there's a big shock. Not even China. Sputtering China once again with those industrial profits, Mark. What do you, what do you make of the data that's come through uh, in the last 24 hours out of China and how to read that in terms of the markets? So. Definitely not China for the kind of global story because the negative China story has been there all year. And, you know, and I think you know, it's not going to suddenly get much, much worse. It may not be a tailwind. It may not be a positive story. We talked about at the end of last week how kind of disappointing that property move was and why we shouldn't read too much into that. Again, it's a bit disappointing how negative China has been today. I've seen the industrial uh, profits note data being kind of spun either way. I don't think it's a big impact. I think it's more of a marginal change. The fact is Chinese economy has been a big disappointment disappointment this year. It's been one of the themes that I have got wrong personally. I know many other people have out there. And I think that it's not yet picked up. However, it's not the appalling recession story that some would have you believe. It's just very, very disappointing and sluggish growth. And that means there's not the animal spirits in China, either in the consumer sector, in business expenditure, nor in markets. Yeah, hard to find those animal spirits. Arguably, you are still seeing them amongst the U.S. Uh, consumer, though, Mark. We saw that headline, $10 billion worth of spending. And you've been consistent. We have to watch the consumer to get a gauge as to when, if and when that recession uh, comes through, which, of course, is a view you stick to. What, what do you make of this data coming out in terms of the spending power uh, of U.S. consumers? There is a note of caution, isn't there? Yeah, but look, I am getting nervous that I'm going to be wrong. Look, six months ago, I was the one saying the recession won't come as early as people think. And now I'm very much in the bearish camp because I think we're kind of close to the start of it. But that consumer is not cracking yet. And this idea that they're going to go to buy now, pay later products, rack up more debt for the holiday season, kind of is an ongoing theme that the consumer uh, collapse might come later. So perhaps this recession is maybe early next year rather than starting in December this year, which has been my call till now.